Well, we're here with our good friends, uh, Daryl and Virgil from the Just Thinking podcast. We've been talking to them about their new book, Just Thinking About the State, that Founders Press will be releasing August the 31st. And we wanted to talk to you guys just a minute or two about what happened in Nashville at the SBC 2021. Virgil, you were there and you were a part of the pre-conference that Founders sponsored uh, that dealt with Be It Resolved, trying to have resolution in a day of wishy-washiness. And Daryl, you've had had a background in Southern Baptist churches. You're not in a Southern Baptist church now. I haven't been for several years, but you are uh, aware. And so you're very much uh, connected to people who are inside and you have your observations from those uh, from a standpoint that is not intimately involved with the convention. So Virgil, why don't we start with you, man? What, how would you summarize in like two sentences? I'm really going to limit you of uh, SBC 21. What would you say happened? Well, uh, in two sentences, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a lot of ands in there. <laughs> Holy cow! I mean, it, it was it was very interesting and telling. I, I would say that, um, that 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 the fruit of of pragmatism has mm. has really been expressed. You see that a lot in in the responses, whether they were from the stage or whether they were from microphones. And by that, what I simply mean is that. Um, we've decided to capitulate to what culture dictates around the issue of critical race theory. And that's uh, sad and unfortunate to watch and witness, uh, but it's the, re- it's the reality. I'm, my encouragement would be, again, I wouldn't encourage anyone to, to stay or leave. Mm. Uh, folks are going to have to make a decision about their own conscience with regard to what they decide to do. But, but being there live and in person really was, was one of those things where you saw it was, it's imperative and incredibly important uh, for theological education to take place, uh, for pastors to get back to the sufficiency of Scripture, uh, and to begin preaching that in a in a powerful way from pulpits, uh, from from an expositional standpoint, because the people are in need of it. Uh, the light of the gospel is 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 again being dimmed, not only in the culture, but we're seeing it seep into the church, and uh, that was very evident while I was there at the at the SBC convention. Daryl, what about uh, your perspective from maybe a higher point of view and disconnected a little bit? Yeah, I had a I had an uh, a, a, an interesting interesting perspective as an outsider. You know, um, I'm on social media all the time, just a part of my role at Grace to You. Um, so I, I, I was sort of monitoring the conference as a, at a distance with respect to how folks who were there at the conference, as well as others who may have been streaming it or whatever, were were were, were commenting on the, on the goings on. And just a couple of things that stood out to me. Uh, number one was just the political posturing mm. that. On uh, w- w- within this convention, even before the convention started, maybe a few weeks leading up to the convention, uh, you know, there were comments being made uh, by 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 various people who who supported the various candidates for one reason or another. But just the politiz- politicization of this convention was very disappointing. That was very sad to see because it sounded to me, it looked to me, like what mattered most to uh, to most people who were commenting on the convention was who was gonna be elected president. I saw very little, if any, really, to be honest with you, I saw very little commentary with respect to the significance of staying biblically true to the scriptures, staying biblically faithful to what the gospel is. So the political posturing that I saw was very sad and disappointing. The number two, this sort of bumper sticker phrase that the world is watching. Uh, that, that was very disappointing to see because it seemed like that little phraseology is what drove uh, or, or what was intended to drive the mindset of the attendees at the, uh, at, uh, at the SBC conference in that uh, their concern should be what everyone from the outside is thinking about them. What, what view, what, what visage are we going to give to the world? What would the world think of us if we uh, elect this president, this person president versus that person president. The world is watching us. Well, who cares what the world thinks? Who cares what the world thinks? And, and that was disappointing is that the uh, many of the leadership within the SBC tended to give more weight to what the world was going to think when they shouldn't care at all what the world thinks. There's the world, there's the church. The church, what, what they should have been more concerned about was what the, the members of the SBC, what the churches that belong to the SBC convention think, okay, who cares what the world thinks? So I was very disappointed to see that that sort of bumper sticker phrase sort of drove a lot of the activity within the convention. And then lastly, I want to say that this particular convention 
uh, display to me, again, as an outsider, the downside of denominationalism. Because what you're looking at, <clears throat> uh, Tom, what I thought was a political loyalty to denominationalism that overrode loyalty to the, to the veracity of scripture. Mm. No different than what we are warned to do in politics in general, okay, is to not marry to a political ideology, not marry to a political party, not marry to a political ideology, but you should marry yourself and make sure that you are joined at the hip as, as if you're, uh, as if it's an, an umbilical cord to the veracity and the truth of the gospel of scripture, what scripture says, just the authority and the veracity of scripture. But this convention was so political. There was so much loyalty displayed, I think, to the SBC as a denomination and what uh, uh, the result of the presidential election would mean for the SBC as a domination, as an entity, as opposed to what would be the carryover as it relates to the church and the gospel. What's the impact to the church and the gospel? That I was very disappointed to see that. So I think this particular convention displayed uh, a dark side of denominationalism that I that I didn't like to see. I didn't like to see yeah, that. That's a, that's a very good point, uh, Daryl Virgil. Thank you for both of those. And, and the way I've tried to frame this, and we in our discussions is that we see a tribalism going on that trumps the truthfulness of Scripture. And so we don't see equal weights and measures being used for all people. If it's my tribe, well, then, hey, we're going to give them a pass if they lie or if they uh, do something underhanded, if uh, they do something that lacks integrity. Suddenly, we're going to cover that up and we're going to give every benefit of the doubt. If it's your tribe, well, then you get no benefit of the doubt. In fact, we don't mind running roughshod over Scripture to charge you with all kinds of uh, evil things because you're in the other camp. And that tribalism, oh, it's wicked. And it does. It undercuts our devotion to Christ and our devotion to his word. And I think, yeah, we see that on display, not only in the convention that met in Nashville, but in the aftermath and things that have happened since. And Tom, let me say this real quick. I would have more respect for, number one, I, I, want, I think you nailed it right there, 100% with respect to the tribalism that's present within the SBC. I would have more respect for leadership within the SBC if they would just come out and acknowledge that that tribalism exists yeah. because it, everybody saw it. OK, you have to be blind to not see that. And I would have much more respect for them if they would just come out and admit that that's what is on display here. You have uh, cliques, you have silos, you have tribal tribes that are loyal to one another. Whatever the tribe is, that's what that's what's mostly driving the SBC right now is this tribalism. And then they have the nerve to come out after the election and say, well, we need to unify. <laughs> yeah. well, the, one thing I can't, I can't stand, I can't stand it in myself and I can't stand it from someone else is hypocrisy. And that's all I'm seeing right now in the aftermath of this SBC convention. They need to come out and acknowledge that tribalism uh, is alive and well within the SBC as well as hypocrisy and that you're coming out and asking for unity on the basis that your tribe happened to win. You know, what's interesting about the tribalism idea, it seemed to me at this convention particularly that we're really only two tribes that that's that's the narrative there are the fight and fundy pirates who were trying to take over the sbc which virgil is squarely in that group <laughs> because he used the word critical race theory and intersectionality and, and virgil i'm sorry we're going to have to edit that out for the sake of our witness because the world is watching virgil and we need to not name you can talk about theories and worldviews virgil but i but can't you, name that one no don't name critical race theory and intersectionality because if you do you're a fundamentalist pirate so the the other camp are the um, people who are claiming that there are no moderates in the SBC, but we're the winsome evangelicals. That, that, that's the vision. We're the winsome evangelicals. Well, we just elected a president uh, and his wife preaches with him on Sunday morning. His church's confession on their doctrine of God uh, declared that God had parts. Uh, we have that kind of thing going on while people are trying to say, well, we're going to claim the middle, this warm evangelical winsome middle, and then set anyone else that is going to say, hey, there's really a problem here. We're going to put them in the camp of the pirates who didn't, who didn't win, who didn't uh, move forward. And that paradigm is just really, really bad. I do think it's a narrative that if, if, it's, if it's swallowed, you're going to see people really getting caught in a position that they don't want to be in. 
Yeah, one of, one of the things, Jared, that's happening with regard to what you just mentioned is, is twofold. And, and let me let me start by saying I was with uh, what Daryl said about the whole world is watching. That that drove me nuts to the point where I actually I actually tweeted out uh, the, the 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 bench line, the 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 our, our thought process, our foundation shouldn't be the whole world is watching. It should be that God sees. Mm. Uh, our concern shouldn't be that the whole world is watching. Our concern should be that God sees and that we're accountable to Him. And 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 again, when I when I point back to the to the pragmatic approach of of even the language, the whole world is watching. Our concern is more to what works based upon relevance and culture rather than the revelation of Scripture. And those kinds of things need to be thought through. But, but I, I I agree with you. I think I think. What we're seeing happen within SBC circles is not very different than what we're seeing in culture. What we're seeing in culture is people are taking language like marriage, uh, like like race and, and and or racism and recreating it to mean something totally different. Racism is now not something that happens between two individuals. It's something that we breathe in our air, right? Uh, male and female, all these, all these, the, the, all the, the language is being shifted. And, and we're seeing the same thing happen in church culture, where now, uh, rather than saying we're, we're moderates, they're saying, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm actually a conservative. But my conservative position, if you look at the, where they stand, uh, em- embraces ideas like the ideas you mentioned, like having my, my wife preach in the pulpit with me on Sunday morning. That's the, that is now the co-opted conservative view, right? And so you're seeing the same kinds of things happen within church culture, and it's problematic. Words actually matter. Mm. Theology matters. And we've got to get back to the sufficiency of the word of God. Amen. You know what, brothers? I mean, we all agree that uh, what is going on in the SBC, the problems that are there cannot be solved by any political maneuver. You know, it's not going to be politics. God must help. God must come down. And that will happen when God's people repent, when we own our sin, when we see what we've done in the light of the scripture, and we acknowledge that we have fallen short of God's glory in so many ways, from leadership down through all of us in the SBC. We need to humbly bow before God and beg him for mercy, ask him for reformation and revival as we refuse to budge one inch on what the word of God actually says. If the Lord will help us to do that and see more and more churches uh, come together and unify around that, then perhaps the Lord will be merciful and will shower us with his blessings. Amen. Thanks for joining us for an SBC debrief, brothers. Yes. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Good to see you.